Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on, everybody? This is Joseph Conlon coming to you with your Monday Night Raw review on Monday, May 25th, 2020. First of all, happy Memorial Day to everybody out there that is watching this. Um, today was a crazy day in the wrestling community. I'm not going to talk about the situation I'm not going to acknowledge it here. It's just very, very stupid. And people are taking it more serious than it actually is. And that's why I laid low, was laying low most of the entire day on social media and just was not on Twitter today. I don't, I try to stay out of the drama as much as possible on Twitter. I don't want to shill myself, but I feel like on all of Twitter, I could be one of the most chill people, and I'm one of the most nice, I'm probably one of the nicest people um, in the community, if, even if I, even when I crap on the shows like I'm going to tonight, I still think I'm one of the nicest people in the wrestling community, I don't make, I don't make death threats of anybody. I don't call people out unless we're well, just talking about wrestling. Like, I'll call people out. Someone when we're, like talking about wrestling. I, I'm cool with that. But, like, for, like, personal stuff and making death threats, that's not cool at all, man. So, I'm that's, the, that's it. That's all I'm talking about, about that situation. Mm-hmm. Monday Night Raw. Um, and it was your typical show tonight. Uh, it was your holiday edition of Monday Night Raw. And it really didn't have a lot much to offer. Not a, a lot of segments. We had one, two, let me see this. Two, three, four, five matches in a three hour show on Monday Night Raw. That's immediate thumbs down for me right there. We'll talk about the entire show right here tonight on the Big Five Field channel. But before. I talk about Monday Night Raw. It is very, very important that you guys check out my Double or Nothing review that I did on Saturday night for AEW. That was an awesome show. I had such a blast watching the show on um, Saturday night, tweeting during the show, doing the review. It was the most liked video here on the channel, so I want to thank you guys For that, I also want to thank you guys for the incredible views that I had last week as well. Every video, I believe, I believe every video was above 50 views. So that is a great job. And we gained four new subscribers. We were at 76 last Monday. Going into this week, we're at 80 subscribers. So guys, we were only 20 subscribers away from 100, which is the goal for now. It's 100 subscribers. Hopefully we get there soon. I'm hopefully was thinking about hopefully getting 100 subscribers by backlash. But I feel like at this point it's stretching it and it's probably not going to happen. So that's that. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. Kevin Owens started off with the Kevin Owens show. Nothing much happened here. Kevin Owens tried to make this segment entertaining as possible. But... It was the Kevin Owens show with Asuka, Charlotte, Natalia, and Nia Jax. This was just to try to get us hyped for the triple threat match later tonight. And it didn't. It did not. Kevin Owens was entertaining here. Nia Jax came out. Kevin Owens got immediately out of the ring. So I laughed at that. That was pretty funny. Besides that, this did nothing. This segment accomplished nothing. Moving on here for the United States Championship. We saw Apollo Crews versus Andrade with Apollo Crews picking up the United States Championship. Finally, after four years, this guy has been on the main roster. It's his time. He's the United States Champion. I couldn't be any happier for Apollo Crews. He is seriously 
one of the most underrated competitors this Monday Night Raw roster has, and he's one of the most underrated competitors in the entire WWE. And he was very emotional in the interview when holding the United States Championship. Andrade was pissed backstage, and the match was very good as well. For what I saw, the match was very, very good, and um, Apollo Crews is your new United States Champion. Thank goodness. Andrade, unfortunately, he did nothing with that United States Championship. He did not elevate the United States Championship to any higher levels. In my opinion, he only had one defense of the United States Championship before Apollo Crews, which was Humberto Carrillo at Elimination Chamber. And that was basically it from Andrade's United States Championship run. It was not memorable whatsoever. It was very lackluster. And I'm hoping the same thing doesn't happen with Apollo Crews. Um, will it happen? My bet would be yes. That uh, Apollo Crews could be a... Uh, a uh, lackluster champion, just like Andrade is, but I mean, we'll have to see. We'll definitely have to see. Seth Rollins cut a backstage promo with Rey Mysterio's mask. He still talked about re sacrificing Rey Mysterio, and he's thankful for Buddy Murphy and his new disciple, Austin Theory. And Theory said that... Last week, he thought he lost his friends, and then Seth Rollins was there to rise him up and give him new power. And Murphy was like, I had to work from the ground up, and no one helped me, and I needed the Messiah to help me get to where I want to be. And then Seth Rollins said that Theory and Murphy would teach a lesson to Aleister Black, and Humberto Correa later on Monday Night Raw. Very good promo from Seth Rollins and the, his disciples as well. It's a very good promo. And um, it sets up the tag team match for later on. Talk about a chore to watch. We got the Iconics who lost their women's tag team title match last week. And they talked about apologizing to each other and that they were the women's tag team champions together at WrestleMania. They signed the WWE contract together. They were in NXT together. And they will never break up. And Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, they came out. Nikki Cross cut a promo, not Alexa Bliss. I did not pay attention to this. I heard people... Um, say that Nikki Cross cut a great promo. That's great. I'm not going to go back and watch it. It's just a waste of my time. And then the Iconics lay out Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. And the Iconics held up the Women's Tag Team Championships. And that was it. This segment was a chore to watch. And it is almost certain that we're getting another women's tag team title match between these two teams. Uh, I can only hope that it's on an episode of Monday Night Raw and not at Backlash because we do not need that card to be as worse as it already is. And we will talk about that after the Nia Jax match. But this segment was terrible. We again saw the VIP lounge Hosted by MVP with his guest Drew McIntyre. And Drew McIntyre came out. He said, the last time I was on VIP Lounge, I gave you a Claymore. And I was not the WWE Champion. And things have changed since. MVP was like... The last time Drew McIntyre was on the VIP Lounge, I knew Drew McIntyre was going to win the WWE Championship. And I'm going to be the person who strategizes Drew McIntyre losing the WWE Championship to Bobby Lashley 
at Backlash because Bobby Lashley has been waiting for this opportunity for 13 years and he's going to shut Drew McIntyre up at Backlash and then Bobby Lashley came out uh, and uh, Drew McIntyre gave MVP a Claymore and Bobby Lashley just stood there he kind of looked like a dummy in that but besides that I really liked this segment it was pretty good segment was pretty good um, MVP can really talk on the microphone that's for sure MVP cut a really good segment in this promo and that's really all I have to say about this this was up nah I like to pile on and try to better than this but this was not bad this was a decent segment and then we go into a decent match between Angel Garza and Kevin Owens and um excuse me uh Kevin Owens is making his entrance Garza attacks his knee and then in the match Garza's going after the knee Kevin Owens goes for the cannonball um he clutches his knee and Garza takes advantage he, Owens then tries to go to the top rope I think and he misses Garza hits Owens with a wing clipper and Garza gets a shocking victory over Kevin Owens I did not Expect WWE to give Angel Garza this victory over Kevin Owens, especially after he attacked Kevin Owens in the middle of his entrance. So good on WWE for finally giving Angel Garza a win. This guy desperately needed a win after he has not won a match in a few weeks, I think. Outside of Akira Tozawa. I mean, who the heck is Akira Tozawa, you know? But this win over KO was very good for Angel Garza, and I was happy to see. Um, this was definitely the lowest point of the show. This was by far the worst thing in the show. So the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits playing a game of golf. And the Street Profits were playing normal golf while acting like jackasses. And the Viking Raiders, Eric threw his club and it landed in front of the hole, so he thought that that went in, and it didn't go in. And they were playing with these other guys, and uh, Eric was hitting the golf club like this, and damaging the ground, and the ball wouldn't go up, and he threw the ball at the hole, and dude, the two guys that were playing golf with him were just... You know, sick of them. So then, they got kicked out of that golf course. And they went to go play miniature golf. And Ivor was about to attack a gator. But the Prophets and Eric held him back. Uh, this is your Monday Night Raw Tag Team Division. This is embarrassing. This is absolutely embarrassing. Uh, for the tag team division. Yes. It is giving the Viking Raiders some personality. But at the end of this. It's mm -hmm. making the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits. Um, making uh, the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits looking like clowns. Which at, at, uh, after all of this. They're looking like clowns. So then next week, they approach each other backstage, and they said the Viking Raiders challenged the Street Profits to Florida wrestling, and he, Angelo Darkin said anything but Florida wrestling or something, a uh, Gator wrestling, my bad, Gator wrestling, and then the Viking Raiders said, "You guys know how to bowl." So awesome, we're getting the Street Profits. And the Viking Raiders next week on Raw in Bowling. Awesome. I can't wait. And the Viking Raiders will probably win that one. And their final contest would be a tag team match at Backlash 
for the Raw Tag Team Championships. That's what I'm going with. Austin Theory and Buddy Murphy took on Humberto Carrillo and Aleister Black. This was okay at best. Um, Aleister Black made a hot tag. Aleister Black makes very good hot tags. And um, just cleaning house, cleaning Buddy Murphy and, and Theory. Humberto Carrillo then made the tag. Aleister Black went over the top rope. And Murphy pushed him off the top rope. And Black went crashing in a barricade. And then Murphy threw him over the barricade near the ringside area. Theory hit ATL on Humberto Carrillo. And Theory and Buddy Murphy get the win. I'm glad these guys got the win. Theory should not have lost in his first match with Seth Rollins. Being in Seth Rollins' corner, considering that Seth Rollins is the best thing on Monday Night Raw now on a weekly basis. I'm glad Theory and Murphy got the win. After the match, Theory and Murphy attack Humberto Carrillo. Uh, they were going to dig his eye into the steel steps. And Alistair Black then came in with a chair. Rollins got on the microphone. He said, stop. You will not move. Or we will dig Humberto Carrillo's eye into the steel steps. Just like we did Rey Mysterio. We do not want to sacrifice Humberto. Just like we did to Rey Mysterio. So Alice Black put the chair down. And the two guys let go of... Humberto, uh, Humberto Carrillo. And then, later on the show, of course, they announced that next week, excuse me, that they announced last next week that Alistair Black will go one-on-one with Seth Rollins. That should be fantastic. That should be awesome. And then, um... We're getting a retirement ceremony for Rey Mysterio. I mean, come on, WWE. Seriously. We're not stupid. This is a work. This is, once again, WWE just slapping us in the face with our apparently dumb intelligence. So that's for all next week. We then move on to a triple threat number one contender match where the winner will face Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship at Backlash. And this match makes no sense. Please tell me how this match makes sense. We saw Charlotte, who's the NXT Women's Champion. She should not even be on Raw, yet she's on Raw and SmackDown. Although I did not watch SmackDown this week. Because SmackDown's a waste of time. Natalia, who lost twice to Shayna Baszler. She's in the number one contender match. But Shayna Baszler isn't. I don't get it. And then Nia Jax. So, already, this was a very predictable outcome. Nia, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, it pains me to say this. Nia Jax made the most sense to win this match. Nia Jax did win this match. Yeah, yes, people. I, I did not watch the match. So if you're asking me to break down the match, um, you're not going to get that. I'm sorry. But Nia Jax won this match. She goes on to face Asuka at Backlash for the Raw Women's Championship. Will the match be good? I doubt it. But... Nia Jax is not winning. So that's a positive. Nia Jax stands no chance beating Asuka at Backlash. And if she does, shame on WWE. Uh, There's a few talking segments backstage that I'm just going to skip just to save time. Rob Gronkowski, who cares? Edge cut a fantastic promo 
Brett backstage. That's all I'm going to say about that. It was a fantastic promo talking about Randy Orton and the match at Backlash and doubting himself. Randy Orton making Edge doubt himself and feel like, can I really do this? So that was great. And then we saw another Liv Morgan promo as well. Same thing as last week. Um, they advertised Ric Flair for this show. And I thought this would close the show tonight. <laughs> so we saw Ric Flair via satellite. Basically, they made Ric Flair do a satellite to say he's been involved in a lot of great wrestling matches. Edge and Randy Orton could be the greatest wrestling match ever, but Randy Orton is the greatest, is the better wrestler. That's what they literally had Ric Flair come on Skype and say. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I expected more from this. I really did. I thought this would close out the show. Ric Flair would be there live. And Randy Orton could give him an RKO to get heat. But no, Ric Flair did a 20 second Skype saying, you know, I wrestled in a lot of great matches. Randy Orton is a great wrestler. A complete waste of time. Finally, our main event, Street Profits, the Raw Tag Team Champions versus MVP and Bobby Lashley. This was set up when um, MVP and Lashley called Street Profits clowns backstage. I agree with them. Uh, and this was nothing much special. Montez Ford hit a frog splash. Um, Bobby Lashley took out Angelo Dawkins. Bobby Lashley put Montez Ford in a half Nelson. He did not respond to the ref's count and the ref DQ'd. It was obviously the right result. Uh, you can't have the Raw Tag Team Champions losing uh, and losing their mo- uh, their credibility. And you can't have Lashley losing a match literally three weeks before his championship match against Drew McIntyre. And then we close off Raw with a big brawl between Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre uh, with Performance Center talent breaking it all up. And um, so that was that. It was a decent brawl. Uh, I, that was going to be my final point, but I f- totally forgot to talk about what I think about the Performance Center talent and some of the NXT talent in the stands or in the audience, I guess. First off, I was caught off guard with the big hockey glass around the ringside area and the entranceway. It just looked very, very weird. And it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while for me to get used to it. But I'm eventually going to get used to it. Like everything else. Second of all. Their feet must be hurting. Because there are literally no chairs around ringside area. And those and they're doing taping. So those people must be standing there for six hours or a a couple hours so their feet must be hurting and it brung some life to the show it brung just a little bit of life than than it usually had without the wrestlers there but I mean heck if there's one thing that I want WWE to copy AEW from it's certainly this because they need some sort of life on Raw and SmackDown. So maybe, hopefully, tonight's the first step of making Raw and SmackDown feel ha- like have some life. So that's my thoughts on that. And that's your Monday Night Raw review. Outside of Apollo Crews and Andrade, the VIP Lounge, and Angel Garza and Kevin Owens, 
this show was very, very boring tonight, and I could not get myself to care. Thank you guys for watching this raw review. If you haven't already, subscribe right here on the Big Fight Field channel. I will be back here tomorrow with my top five Dark Side of the Ring documentaries of season two. Yes, I was going to do nine rankings, but it's very hard. All the documentaries are great. It's just very hard to rank them. So I'm going to just do my top five favorite Dark Side of the Ring documentaries in season two. So make sure you're on the outlook for that tomorrow. I think I'm going to post it tomorrow night, like around nine o'clock. Um, comment down below what you thought of this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. If you are ready for a fresh new week of content here on the Big Fight Fuel channel, hit that like button. Follow me on Twitter at Colin underscore Joseph and Instagram as well at Colin underscore Joseph. And follow Eddie on Twitter at Eddie Mullins 515. Guys, I will be back tomorrow for my top five Dark Side of the Ring documentaries of 2020. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe.